To analyze a queuing system of any sort, we need to know about something about the process by which customers arrive and the process by which they're served and how many servers there are. And there's something called Kendall notation, which is named after the mathematician who came up with it. And the Kendall notation is of this form. It's of the form A slash B slash C, where this is a letter describing the arrival process. This describes the service process. And this describes over here the number of servers. So for example, the M stands for Markov, which means a arrival process, which is a Poisson arrival process. Uh, D stands for deterministic. and so on. And typically the number of servers is going to be one. This is going to be usually one. But it could also be infinite, which means you have an infinite number of servers. And we'll discuss what that means uh, later on. So the simplest possible queue is what's called the MM1 queue. And that means you have arrivals, which are Poisson. The departures also uh, Poisson with exponentially distributed inter-departure times and a single server. And uh, understanding this is going to be quite important because this is the foundation for the uh, analysis of more complicated queuing systems. Now, we can also have extended forms of the notation where you have A slash B slash C slash D slash E, where this is going to be the number of buffers available. Uh, in, our, in our case, we'll assume infinite buffers for now. And this can be the service discipline how are the uh, customers or jobs served? We'll usually assume first come, first served, which is abbreviated FCFS. But of course, more complex uh, systems can also be studied. Um, so in the MM1 system, we have a state independent arrival rate lambda. So it doesn't matter how many customers are in the queue. We always arrive at the arrival rate is always lambda. And the state independent departure rate is mu, uh, which can be thought of as being the rate at which the server serves the customers. And we have a single server over here. That's the MM1Q. So we want to study the long-term behavior of the queue. So once it's been running for a while, we want to understand uh, what its behavior is. And this will be done by studying the probability that it is in each of these in, 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 in any state. So remember, it's a birth-death process. So uh, in the MM1 queue, we have arrivals at the late lambda, the departures at the rate mu. This is the queue with zero uh, customers in it, zero jobs in it. And we are state independent, so we always have lambda going up and mu coming down. And this could be infinite, or in some cases, it will be bounded for now. In the MM1, the basic case, we'll assume that it is uh, infinitely long Q. OK, so to study this, what we want to do is to uh, use the theory we built up for the birth death processes. And so remember that uh, for a birth death process, we, are, we know that the uh, pi j star, the probability of being in state j, is given by this equation, which we looked at earlier. Pi j star is given by pi 0 star. Uh, the product i equals 1 to j minus 1, lambda i by mu i plus 1. Now, this is assuming that all the lambdas and mu's are different. For the uh, Markov process, MM1 process, uh, uh, we MM1Q, I'm sorry, uh, lambdas and mu are all the same. So this reduces to the simpler equation, which is that uh, pi j star is pi 0 star lambda by mu to the power j, which is quite straightforward. Uh, we often denote rho equals lambda by mu. And rho is also viewed as being the utilization of the server. So this is the utilization. And then in which case, we can write pi j star as being nothing more than pi 0 star and rho to the j. 
Okay. Uh, what about pi pi zero star itself? Uh, skipping the intermediate step, we can find that pi zero star, which is the long-term probability of being in state zero, is given by one over one plus sigma j equals one to infinity rho to the j. And uh, when this uh, when lambda is less than mu, when lambda is less than mu, which is the condition condition for convergence, because we always need to make sure that the arrival rate uh, is less than the service rate, then this denominator will reduce to nothing more than one minus rho, and so we get this nice uh, equation that says that the uh, probability of being in the state zero is one minus the utilization. So in other words, if the utilization is 90%, then 10% of the time we're going to be in state zero, that means we're idle. So this has a very simple and intuitive meaning. Now remember that uh, pi j star is, uh, was given by uh, rho, rho to the, sorry, pi j star is given by pi zero star rho to the j, and so therefore pi j star is now very simply rho to the j, one minus rho. And this is a geometric distribution of the pi j star, which means that if you have a mm1 q and uh, drawn like this, this is state j, etc., then the probability that we're in state j is given by rho to the j, one minus rho, and rho is, of course, a constant. It's just equal to lambda by mu. And uh, so uh, as we have a further larger and larger values of j, the probability that we're in that state declines by the value rho to the j. Of course, rho is, rho is less than 1. So we have a geometrically lower probability of being far away from the zero state. How many customers are in the queue on average? So remember we denoted this by n. n is given by this sum over here, sum j equals zero to infinity, j pi j star. And from this equation over here, where pi j star is rho to the j one minus rho, this is going to be summation j equals zero to infinity, j times rho to the j one minus rho, and if you expand this out, we'll find that n is given by nothing more than rho over 1 minus rho. And so as rho tends to 1, this value tends to infinity. So in fact, if you draw over here uh, rho, which is going from 0 to 1, and over here we draw n, what we find is that it starts over here and it kind of goes up. And as the value goes to 1, it goes to infinity very quickly. Of course, it asymptotes to infinity at the value 1 over here. And so this is a very important behavior. What it says is that as we increase the utilization of the server closer and closer to one, as lambda gets closer and closer to mu, the number of uh, uh, entries in the queue, number of uh, customers waiting servers is going to actually grow asymptotically towards one. And so this is uh, why uh, the, uh, in any queue, as the utilization increases, the waiting time goes up very fast. And in fact, what we see over here is this kind of interesting behavior. You know, For values typically below 0 0.7, the queue is not very big. So we have a, if you keep the utilization of the queue below 70% as a rule of thumb, the delays are not very large. The number of people in the queue is not very large. But once it goes above that, it shoots up very dramatically. So even a small change in the level of utilization from here to here causes the uh, x, the y-axis to shoot up quite a bit. So uh, this is the reason why to maintain service quality, to maintain the re responsiveness of a computer system, we always strive to keep its utilization below uh, approximately 70%. Now, uh, we want to understand why do we have this behavior? Why is it that even when the lambda is less than mu, so let's say lambda equals 0 0.85 mu, so it's 85%, why is it that we still have the delay going up or the number of uh, uh, customers in the queue going up so fast? 
So what's really going on is that you know it, it kind of intuitively doesn't make sense because we are actually have the arrival rate less than the service rate. Lambda is less than mu, it's strictly less than mu, yet we have this. So what's going on is kind of a very interesting uh, an analysis, which is that when you have a packet uh, that uh, and the packets arrive faster than mu. So let's say that we have this is time and this is the service rate mu. Let's say it's deterministic for now. And let's say that we have lambda, which is something like this. And so on average, lambda is less than mu. So lambda is, let's say, 0.85 mu. But at, there are times when lambda is more than mu and the times it's less than mu. Now, whenever lambda is more than mu, as you can see, shaded intervals over here, what's going to happen is the Q is going to build up. And in this period over here, for the first part over here, the Q is going to drain. And let's say at this point over here, when we reach the end of the shaded period, we actually finish draining the Q, the Q is down to zero. Now, during this period of time, that's this empty period of time over here, what we have is that the Q is empty, and uh, the service rate is mu, but it's got nothing to do. It's just sitting there waiting idle. But so whenever the... Uh, so ar arrival rate, whenever lambda exceeds mu, we have the Q build up, but we never have sort of negative credit for departures when mu exceeds lambda. So we have an asymmetric system where the buffer is holding packets that are waiting to be served, but when the Q is empty, we are just wasting time. So during this period, this shaded period over here, unshaded period over here, what's happening is that this portion over here, um, that uh, we are actually are wasting time, and that's the reason why, even though lambda is less than mu on average, uh, in fact, uh, the Q is shooting up, and when lambda is very close to mu, it gets to infinity.